All right, what's going on YouTube? Hope you guys are doing well. Haven't posted a video for a bit, as always. I'm slacking. So this one's for my YouTube peeps out there to uh, teach you guys how to use the music notes in Noita to do big damage. Uh, the music notes are actually one of the best projectiles in the game for just like damage output. Uh, we'll go over why that is. And uh, I, one thing though, I don't plan to cover any of the like lore stuff or any of the like the music note secrets because that stuff's like the basic stuff, right? That's a that's the stuff that like the Noita Wiki will teach you and everything. But uh, I'll start pretty basic. I'll even show you where you get them in case you're confused. And I, I gave myself stuff as if I just just was in the starting zone. Oh hey, <laughs> got a follower while recording a YouTube video. Hey, thank you, Neapolitan, Neo Neapolitan for the the follow. I appreciate that. Uh, so the stuff that I have right now is, this is all stuff that you could find in the first area. Now obviously teleports and black holes would be considered pretty lucky to find in the first zone. But you don't have to use black holes for what I'm about to show you. But you do need to have something that can dig through like holy mountain material. Something that's, it doesn't have to, it's not, it's not a holy mountain. But the different material has different rules, right? Like a, a lot of material, you can just drop a bomb and it will blow it up and it will just dig away at it. Well, the material that we're about to be digging through uh, shares like similar rules to the Holy Mountain. Regular bombs don't let you destroy it. You have to have something powerful like acid or in this case, we're going to use black holes to, to delete it. So we're going to act like we're just heading out of the mines right now and we're heading over to the tree. Now this, if you don't know where, where we're at right now, this is actually the starting spawn location right here. That's where the player starts. And we're going to be heading to the left. Now in this tree that we're heading to, there are music notes and, uh, and, and, and a, like a wand as well. These music notes and this wand are always there in every run you'll ever do. It's not an unlock. It's not anything. It's literally just always there. So I wanted to cover that because I know whenever I record videos, some people will be like, is this a special unlock or whatever? When it comes to Noita, there really isn't any special unlocks. It's just, you know, it's consistent. Every run, you can pretty much get the same stuff. So here we go. We'll climb the tree. We're up on the tree right now. And we're going to go to our black hole wand right here. And we're just going to shoot uh, directly. Well, not directly up. Up and slightly to the left. Give it a moment. Up, up, there we go. So I just took two black holes. If you only have one black hole, there is another angle that you can take. I'm probably going to end up shooting it wrong, but it's somewhere over here. I think it's like about like that. Yeah, there, this is this is if you only have one black hole, you need to approach it from this side. If you have two black holes, you can you can approach it from, you know, this other angle. All right, so here is the uh, the music notes. One thing that's special about this room that I wanted to point out specifically today, because I am I am posting this video or I'm recording this video on December 17th. And if you happen to go to the Noita Wiki, which is on uh, WikiGG, you can actually go to a holidays section and you can see special stuff for the holidays that happens uh, in Noita. And if you look around Christmas, it says from the 23rd to the 27th in December, uh, specifically the uh, Cantel, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Cantel Room Grant Wand Tinkering Effect. So what that means is this room that we're in right here from December 23rd to the 27th, you will be able to edit your wands whenever you're in this area. So that's kind of a, a fun thing. I mean, Noita does random stuff like that. Uh, I, I like that kind of stuff. It's just fun for a couple of days, but it's not permanent. Obviously, it is very nice. It's very convenient to have. It's pretty much an extra holy mountain editing area that if you're doing a long run, that could be pretty convenient if you don't get tinker with wands everywhere. It can save you a bit of time. So let's go ahead. Let's grab up some of these spells. Now, these spells right here... A lot of people use them for the main purpose of like there is stuff that you can look up on the Noita Wiki, like I said, uh, stuff that can help you fast travel or just do special stuff related to to unlocks like uh, the chest or whatever. But we're about to be covering how to do damage with them. One more detail I want to point out about this tree. If you do go over here, 
don't go much higher than this. If you go a little bit higher than this, you're going to spawn in some acid spitting enemies. And if you win here super early, like I did right now, they're going to be very, very annoying. Now, since I gave myself a Tele Wand here, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you just so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. But if you head up just a little bit higher, they'll kind of fall into screen. Yeah, there they go. And those guys, I mean, a lot of you probably recognize those guys. They're not like a super big deal, but if you're heading over there with just a Spark Bolt Wand, you may be, you know, you may be a little bit overwhelmed because there's quite a few of them and they can they can be pretty frustrating so let's go ahead let's head down to the holy mountain and then we're going to do a bit of editing here i'll try to cover it you know decently well but just know that i'm kind of giving you a foundation here don't go thinking just because i didn't cover it as a way to do damage with the music notes that it doesn't do damage it's more like i'm just giving you a foundation so you can think creatively to make your own builds with it because there are there are literally thousands of different ways you could you could do damage with the 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 note wand that we're going to do here or that we're going to build here so let's go ahead and head over to the shop and snag up what we want is a i mean it could be any wand these these things are very cheap look at these music notes they cost one mana and whenever you cast it bing, like it's just it's just a music note by itself it doesn't do anything else it's, it just is a music note in fact if i go over here to the statue and i i cast the music note into the statue you'll see that it does nothing it just it just is a music note but if you attach a little bit of damage to the music note damage plus now this music note that is only it still only costs just one mana now has this extra five mana cost damage plus attached to it so it, this this damage plus does 10 damage watch this when we cast this right here look at that it does 10 damage so now you have added damage to a music note and we're going to cover why you would want this over like a spark bolt because you know most of the time you'd prefer have have a little bit of range right you want to shoot from far away but there is an advantage to this music note but let's uh let's real quick let's go over here and find a wand that's a like a starter wand i'll go over this other wand in a bit here but first let's get a, get a starter wand just so i can show you how powerful this wand uh or these spells can be now, the idea is, if you're wanting to use a music note to do damage, you'd probably put it after a trigger or a timer, because, you know, casting it directly from yourself isn't exactly ideal. You have to get pretty close to the enemies, and even if you did get good modifiers to make the music note travel further, you like to throw the music notes. You like to throw them at your enemies. So, what we're going to do is do a, a spark trigger, and then put the music note after it. So again, in this scenario, only the spark trigger would be doing damage. The music note would just, on, on impact, you just see the music note play and there'd be no damage. So the three damage that you're seeing on the statue is just the three damage from this spark bolt, none from here. So we're gonna scoot it over, add the damage plus, and then now we can go back to shooting it. Now it says 13 damage. So three damage from here, 10 damage here. So you can spread that damage to, uh, to multiple things. You could do like a triple here and put uh, three music notes. So now when the spark bolt hits, it will deliver three of these, each doing uh, 10 damage because of the damage plus, which means you'll know, get 30 damage just from the music notes alone, 33 total. Uh, but I, I want to show a couple other things that we could do with this music note. Uh, one thing that makes a music note special, besides just adding damage to it, you know, obviously allows you to, to do damage to enemies with the music, but you can also extend the life of a music note. So whenever I cast it regularly, just like this, it dies very quickly. But if I was to use this orbiting arc here, actually, you know what, first we'll start with this ping pong. Ping pong right here. It extends the life. As you can see, the music note is alive a little bit longer. Now, this is important because a music note doesn't work like a regular projectile. A regular projectile, you'll notice that whenever it makes contact, like the statue, for example, it, the, the spark bolt just dies. Hits the wall, it dies. But a music note kind of can... It, nothing kills it off other than time. It times out. Not on impact, not anything like that. It literally just times out. So the longer you can make it last the longer and, and more opportunities it has to do damage to enemies. In fact, let's say it does 10 damage and, you, and it, the, the music note hits an enemy, it will sit on top of the enemy and can deliver the 10 damage multiple times even though you only shot it one time. So for example, if we were to, let's go ahead and do it with Orbiting Arc. Orbiting Arc, I like it too. This one adds both lifetime and damage. So this will make the, the, the music note, again, when it's on its own, dies really fast. With the orbiting arc, you shoot it, 
you see it's it's alive a little bit longer and in fact you'll see that even though the the orbiting arc only adds three damage watch when we shoot it into the statue uh what will happen let's see sometimes you can get it just right uh, it's not really showing it very well sometimes if you can get it to move while it's on the statue you'll actually see the damage uh hit multiple times we may get lucky and get to see it in a bit spiral arc does it really well but don't worry we'll you'll get it you'll get a good look at it in, in a bit here anyway so i'm not super worried about that so i would do like orbiting arc on a triple and have these three see this is nice because it's a zero mana modifier adding three damage to all of these which you would think is only going to be nine damage but because they naturally pierce like when they hit an enemy they'll naturally just keep hitting them it so they'll deal damage uh, multiple times so one music note could potentially do like you know i uh, it's hard to say exactly how much because it depends on how many frames are alive but let's just say like 10 15 damage even though you're only adding three damage to that one music note so this right here is a one that costs a total of 10 this is zero this is two so 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 mana. And we're already shooting and hitting enemies for, it, on the statue, it looks like it says like just like 24, but in reality, we're actually hitting a decent amount harder than that. So let's go ahead into the level. No, before I do that, let me, hmm. How do I want to show you guys this? Let me show you, because once I leave this level, we'll lose our ability to edit. So I don't want you guys to, to miss out on any mechanics here. So let me just show you a couple more tweaks and then we'll go into the level and we'll do a bit of shooting so you can see it in action, you know? Um, because you'll, I think you'll be surprised on how important this, this piercing effect is. Because if you were to, for example, do an orbiting arc with three spark bolts, it also would be doing similar damage. But because the statue doesn't really show the piercing damage that well, you may not realize that whenever you're shooting enemies at this, at this level especially, they will not survive these hits. They'll be dying very fast. They would especially be dying if we used a damage plus, because that would be 10 damage. 10 piercing damage on all of these but the downfall is that the this damage plus doesn't have the extended lifetime that a modifier like orbiting arc does some modifiers are just that way some modifiers add damage some modifiers add lifetime some modifiers do both which is orbiting arc is a little bit of both a little bit of damage a little bit of lifetime uh like ping pong for example that i was showing that one just adds lifetime so you really wouldn't be that happy with just ping pong if you wanted to use ping pong you would probably want to do something like um Let's see, something like this, where you would, you would just stack lots of damage modifiers onto this one music note, because you'd be like, okay, I want to make sure that this one music note has lots of damage and lives as long as possible. And in fact, you'll see that music note stays alive for a while. And as the music note's sitting there, enemies can walk into it and it will kill them. Not the player, though. So while I've said it has natural piercing, I guess one thing I should have covered, the natural piercing is not dangerous to the player. It's only dangerous to enemies. Because normally in Noito, when you hear piercing, you're like, whoa, I gotta, I gotta stay away from that one. But that, I guess, is is a very uh, key you know, component. It's piercing, safe, safe for the player to use piercing, not the dangerous kind. Uh, so like this is this so this one adds extra lifetime. This one adds lifetime and damage. This one adds just damage. This is another example of another thing that just just adds lifetime. Nothing. I mean that one doesn't really need too much explanation considering the name is increase lifetime. Uh, but before we go on the level and to and do some more damage, I want to show you the matter eater on the on a music note. So the matter eater is a modifier that normally if you attach it to like a spark bolt or something when you shoot it it'll eat away at material the, if, if it's fast this is a fast traveling projectile spark bolt is so it does a usually pretty crappy job at at eating away at the wall you know but let's say we attach that to a music note because we're losing charges right we have now down to seven charges let's say we do this uh, on the wall here look how well the the music note eats away at the wall compared to the spark bolt and an important detail here is that music notes will not cause the matter eater to lose charges. So you have infinite digging here on a, on a music note. And that works on any of the music notes. Again, regular projectiles cause it to lose a charge. Music notes will not cause it to lose a charge. The so if, if you were to do like a, like a triple and add, add a projectile, now it will go back to losing charges. That's because there is at least there is at least one projectile here for it to lose a charge on. But a music note on its own is not considered a projectile. It's actually it's it's in the type other, and because of that, it doesn't it doesn't take away charges. You can so you can put a triple and put down three music notes, 
and and shoot that and you'll see that it e eats away at the wall you know pretty dang well sorry the reason it's, it, the wand is kind of it's a starter wand so we keep having to wait for the mana to recharge that's why not every shot has matter eater on it it's pretty darn slow i'm covering all these just give you giving you a foundation and then i'm going to show you what a late game music wand looks like in just a moment here but let's go ahead and let's build back our uh, i mean there's, a, there's this damage one this one would be good i'll show you this one though orbiting arc that way we have a combination longer lifetime plus uh plus we have damage on it so it'll pierce into them and, and hurt them so we're gonna have that but i'm also going to grab a wand that i'm going to show in a bit here this one is an example of like a late game music note wand so the only damage that is on this wand, the only the only damage that we're doing is the music notes. Well, and, and one of the digging bolts will be hitting for damage technically, but the music notes are the the stars of this second wand. But before we go showing that off, let's show off this little basic music note wand. I'm kind of trying to show you how you could you could start with music notes early and still do good, and then slowly graduate. You know, keep keep building it up as you're going. So I feel like sometimes people see spells and see like a late game build with them and just say, oh, that is a late game wand, right? Or that's a late game spell. So if I ever get to the late game, I'll use those spells. When the music notes are kind of that that perfect example of a, a spell that can, as you grow, can grow with you because as you gain more modifiers, you just keep attaching more modifiers onto it as you go. And it, it, there's there's way more modifiers to use with these than I showed. I just, Like I said, these are just a, found, a foundation, give you something to work with, not anything that's like, you know, hopefully nothing that's overly complicated. I was kind of hoping there'd be a couple more enemies that we'd run into, but it's no big deal. I'm just going to shoot a couple more. Oops. As you can see, uh, some enemies have like hitboxes that are a little bit weird. So whenever you hit them, the music notes can fly behind them. This is an example of why it's nice in, the, in, in your late game builds to have homing on it because Yes, this, the, the projectile, even though they, even though the music notes flew behind them, they can still do damage. It's just the hitbox is it's hitting them in such a way that the, the damage part's kind of flying off to the side. So if you have homing on it when it flies off to the side, instead it will fly back onto them and kill and finish them off. So as you can see, you know we're doing good damage. Let's rush over to the fungal area, see if we can maybe see some somewhat thicker enemies. So you can, because these enemies right here, I mean, spark bolts are enough to take them down, right? It's nothing too, too wild. And in fact, what I'd recommend you doing if you have Matter Eater decently early is just go ahead and putting Matter Eater on like one of your backup wands just so you can use the, the setup to to dig wherever you need to dig to. Even if it's really slow, it is nice to have infinite digging. Um, hmm. Let us over there, Fungal. So this area to the left, the enemies are a bit beefier. That's why it's a good place to use as an as an example. Oh, didn't quite didn't quite make it through there, did I? All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot myself through. Whoop. It was a little bit sloppy of a showing there. So if you notice, one of the big problems with. Uh, the tentacle guy was our music notes were flying a bit to the side we opened up pretty well on them i feel like there's a good moment there you could see the piercing this definitely definitely is wasteful because we don't have homing on there because you can see so many of the shots just flying off to the side not really getting to hit as as nice as you would like and the swapper definitely made that kind of a stressful moment <laughs> well, i was like for a second i thought i was about to die i was like no i wanted to show this wand it's pretty cool yeah, you can see the piercing a bit. Mainly when you, whenever that one shot flies past the tentacle guy, you'll see that the music notes kind of flew back into them and still and still hurt them. Yeah, pretty good showing. Let's go ahead. Let's let's graduate to our stronger wand just so we can show uh, just how crazy these wands can get. These music note wands. So on this wand, I've um, I've utilized the fact that our our wand has like infinite matter eater and i've added damage to it i've added i've extended the lifetime of it using spiral arc spiral arc does extend this lifetime and i've put homing on it just so that we don't have those situations like you just saw where the tentacle shots kept flying past them and it was getting really annoying and the downfall though in this build having homing on it is if i get polymorphed uh, my own music notes can kill me because they'll see me as an enemy and they'll home on to me you do have to be kind of careful of those. 
But yeah, this is an example of a late game uh, build that you can do with the music notes. I don't want to cover and go over every detail of it because if you look at it, it's a little bit, there is, it, there's, is some slightly advanced mechanics, but I wanted to just show that the music notes can graduate to a point where they're like so strong, you're just shredding all enemies in like one shot like they're nothing. And you're deleting whole areas because of the infinite matter eater too on top of it. It's a pretty nice combination. But the infinite matter eater is actually coming from the add trigger. That's a whole other late game mechanic, which we'll talk about. Which I've actually kind of covered it in other videos before, so I don't think it's you know necessary here. But there you go. There's a there's your look at music notes, how they can potentially do tons of damage. I hope you enjoyed it. Later, guys.